last week, Chicago's chapter of the anti-capitalist Occupy movement invited domestic terrorist turned University of Illinois professor Bill Ayers to instruct the young protesters on the finer points of revolutionary tactics. Welcome to the uh, teaching on uh, nonviolent direct action. This is uh, Professor Bill Ayers. Uh, he's got a lot of wisdom. The teaching got off to a bizarre beginning when Ayers was interrupted by an unexpected delivery. The fat cats at the Board of Trade sent his group pizza. But this group didn't come here just to feed off the generosity of their capitalist hosts. They came here to talk about revolution. Ayers is something of an expert in this field. Here, he tells his eager listeners about the time he was meeting with the Vietnamese to discuss fomenting revolution in America. I, again, I remember very vividly when we with the Vietnamese many, many years ago and sorry, telling them our great plans for revolution. They all thought it was wonderful. And then they said, but have you talked to your Republican parents recently? And I'm like, why would I talk to my parents? Please, talk to your parents. In the following clip, Ayers laughs at the idea of the Occupy movement behaving lawfully. The uh, mayor of Atlanta just extended the occupation permit for three more weeks. He said something along the lines of, like, people have a right to do civil disobedience as long as it's respectful, orderly, and he used this word, as long as it's lawful. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> so, a short time later, the group was informed that they were on private property and they were being asked to leave. So they were forced to find a different location to occupy. But these protesters wouldn't let that get in the way of this moment with their infamous mentor. They wanted to know, what should they do next? Should they try to find common ground with the Tea Party? As I'm sure you're aware, the press has been trying to frame us as in this kind of battle with the Tea Party. And I was some people are saying that we should try and reach out to them and focus on the issues that we share and uh, and show our nonpartisanship that way. Whereas, like many of us others, are kind of like, no. Uh. <laughs> no doubt that a big, big bright line running through the Tea Party movement is jingoism, nativism, racism. That's there. A big bright line is funding from the Koch brothers. It's a big funded front group. You know, it's it's you know nonsensical in that sense. But people who tap into that energy are not our enemy, actually. And that's an important thing to always remember, that even when they're, you know, puffed up with false stupidity and manipulated by all kinds of forces, that that's what I meant when I said talk to strangers. To me, what makes an organizer different from just an agitator is somebody who's willing to talk to strangers. Finally, the last questioner bluntly asks if they will need to resort to violence to achieve a real revolution. You say, uh, you call this uh, a revolution. Uh, a lot of people here call it a revolution. Some of us say it's a reformation. Now, um, given your, uh, your background and your colorful, your colorful <laughs> history, uh, would you say a nonviolent revolution is successful? Or do you think that at some point in time, in order to have a real revolution, violence is necessary? No, what I would say is different than that. What I would say is that violence is built into... Mike check! Mike check! I was just informed that we're on private property. It would be more better that we go back to where we came from. Okay. Let, why don't we do that? But let me just finish this one sentence. And then we've been talking a long time. We can walk back together. But I would just finish this one sentence. Do I think you should resort to violence? Absolutely not. I think you should use your brilliance, your humor, your wisdom, your body, to dramatize the violence that exists. But we do not live in a neutral, not, not when there's a trillion dollar military budget, the biggest in the world, not when they're recruiting kids to be in the service, not when every athletic event begins with guns and marching. Yep. That's not a non, that's a violent culture. And that's where we live. 
So, no, I think the revolution that I have in mind is one where we get over... A real revolution involves the masses of people transforming themselves, and that's going to require a hell of a lot more than your gun against some other guy's gun. That's not what it's about. It's about really transformation in the head, transformation in the heart, and then transformation on the street. But I do think that we sometimes get into a trick bag where we're supposed to be somehow pristine and precious, and somebody like Barack Obama, who drone strikes and kills American citizens, is saying, you know, I uh, I, I want you all to be nonviolent. Well, I want you to be nonviolent. How about that? <laughs> right, if you're nonviolent, I think that would be a better thing.